Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. So we'll continue our uh, discussion, we'll not continue but uh, resume our discussion with satellite communication systems. So it's been a while uh, since I have posted any video related to this subject. And previously I think I have posted five or six videos, basic introductory videos uh, related to satellite communication systems. So we are going to uh, take our discussion from there. So I would request you to please watch this previous introductory videos first so that you can catch up with this whole discussion. Okay, so so far in the satellite communications we have discussed the basic uh, uh, block diagram representation, how the basic principle of satellite communication, some concept related to orbits, satellite orbit, satellite path, trajectory, all that we have discussed. So in this video, we are going to uh, take that discussion a little bit uh, forward related to orbital mechanics okay, of satellite. Okay, so basically this discussion or uh, the next uh, few discussion or videos will be related to the launch of satellite and how the satellite achieves the desired position in space where we want it to and remains uh, in the specific position and orbits around the specific uh, celestial body, uh, planet or whatever uh, around which it is supposed to uh, monitor that the activity and also related to the measurement of the position of the satellite in terms of various parameters. Okay, orbital parameters. So we'll discuss some orbital parameters, important orbital parameters, and some basic concepts related to the uh, the launching of the satellite and the orbit. Okay, the satellite orbit. Okay. So now, uh, when a satellite is launched from the Earth with the help of launch vehicle, and uh, when it remains stationary or stable in an orbit, there are two main forces that act on the satellite and which keep it in the desired orbit, okay, not to deviate from its desired path or which we want. So, two forces contribute for that, okay. So, one force is the centrifugal force another one is the centripetal force so we must always think when we when the satellite is launched why it keeps on orbiting in one specific orbital path why not it goes to some other position or uh, comes down crashing on the surface of the earth so a lot of calculations uh, go through related to the design of the satellite, the launch velocity and various other things. But the two main things that contribute to that and the design considerations are taken care of with respect to this is the centrifugal force and the centripetal force. Now, the centrifugal force we all know, it acts on the satellite due to the kinetic energy. Okay, it's kinetic energy and this force tries to push the satellite into a higher orbit. Okay, push it away. Okay, push it away. The centripetal force on the other hand, it is due to the gravitational attraction of the planet or the celestial body around which it is orbiting. And this tries to pull it towards the planet okay it is directed inwards so the centripetal force this is directed inwards it tries to pull the satellite towards let's say earth the satellite is orbiting towards earth the centripetal force it tries to pull the satellite towards earth but the centrifugal force that it tries to push the satellite away which is due to its kinetic energy or velocity mainly so the centrifugal force is directed outwards the centripetal force is directed inwards now 
when these two forces they balance out each other only then the satellite can move in a specific path in a specific particular orbit so we'll try to understand uh, the centripetal force the centrifugal force and how they balance out each other and the mathematical uh, expression of uh, these two forces now so for a satellite to remain stable the two forces must cancel out each other must exactly balance out each other so centripetal force acting on the satellite so here the acceleration due to gravity will come into play so the acceleration at a distance r okay at a distance r away from the earth the center of the earth is given by mu by r square where the the term mu is the product of the universal gravitational constant g capital g and the mass of the earth okay so mu is the product of these two constants the mass of the earth and the universal gravitational constant this is the value of mu the acceleration at a distance r okay from the center of the earth let's say it is the radius of the circular orbit let us pick a circular path the satellite is orbiting in a circular path for simpler analysis so the acceleration here at a distance r away from the center of the earth will be this mu by r square now because of this acceleration the force acting on the satellite as per force is equal to mass into acceleration newton second law that will be the centripetal force which will be m into mu by r square where m is the mass of the satellite okay mass of the satellite the acceleration at a distance r away from the center of the earth is mu by r square so the centripetal force is the product of the mass of the satellite and the uh, acceleration to which the satellite is subjected at a distance r from the earth in this circular orbit so the centripetal force is given by this m into mu by r square or m into gme by r square where mu is gme product of universal gravitational constant and the mass of the earth so this is the centripetal force directed inwards trying to pull the satellite towards the surface of the earth next is centrifugal force the other force the centrifugal force which tries to push the satellite away from the surface of the earth into some higher orbit away it is opposite to centripetal this depends on the velocity of the satellite and the centrifugal acceleration or the acceleration due to this uh, you know this is centrifugal that is given by v square by r so you can see it is dependent on the velocity of the satellite the velocity of the satellite the acceleration the centrifugal acceleration is given by v square by r again if we apply newton's second law the centrifugal force acting on the satellite of mass m will be m into v square by r product of mass of satellite and acceleration so in this case the acceleration was mu by r square here the acceleration is v square by r force acting on the satellite the centripetal and centrifugal move there is the product of mass of satellite and the acceleration so centrifugal force is m into v square by r where v square by r is the centrifugal acceleration and the centripetal force is m into mu by r square where mu by r square is this centripetal acceleration so these two forces when they exactly balance out each other cancel out each other in opposite direction only then the satellite will remain in a particular orbit it will move around the earth or any other celestial body in a particular orbit and it will be the position will be called as stable so both these forces should be equal in magnitude opposite in direction so for a satellite to remain stable in a particular orbit 
the centripetal force and the centrifugal force must be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. So, centripetal force is m into mu by r square, centrifugal force is m into v square by r, mass of the satellite that gets cancelled in both the sides and will get mu by r square is equal to v square by r or the velocity of the satellite. Here it is a very important expression of the velocity of the satellite which is the square root of mu by r. Now mu is the product of the universal gravitational constant and the mass of the earth. Okay, That is the value of mu and r is the radius of the satellite for a circular orbit. So you can see that the velocity of the satellite will always be a constant for a particular radius of the orbit and as mu is a constant because it is the product of two constant values the universal gravitational constant and the mass of the earth so the velocity of the satellite can be controlled if we control the orbital radius it is only dependent on the orbital radius because mu is constant so the velocity of the satellite v is related inversely proportional to the uh, the radius of the orbital path now considering a circular orbit with radius r the distance the total distance will be the circumference of the circular path which is 2 pi r and the orbital time period t will be the simply distance by velocity which is 2 pi r by square root of mu by r and this will be the time period will be 2 pi by square root of mu r to the power 3 by 2 that is for a circular orbit and for an elliptical orbit mostly uh, will come across elliptical orbits here we just discuss a circular orbits for simpler analysis so in that case for an elliptical orbit the time period will be 2 pi by square root of mu into a to the power 3 by 2 where a is the semi major axis okay for an elliptical orbit like this the semi major axis this from the center to one of the extreme points which is called as apogee so that is called as the semi major axis and this is the semi minor axis b small b and this small a is the semi major axis so for an elliptical orbit the time period is this much so we'll be discussing about all these uh, elliptical circular orbits and various parameters so don't worry about that so this is the uh, time period the expression for time period for both circular orbits and elliptical orbits and this is the expression for velocity of the satellite in a particular orbit so here we have discussed uh, basic concepts related to the force acting on a satellite and uh, the nature of such force and how these two forces the centripetal and centrifugal force they work in equal magnitudes and opposite directions to keep a satellite stable in a particular orbit and we discussed about the mathematical representation about the velocity of the satellite and the orbital time period. So I hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to engineering science and technology. Have a great day. Thank you very much.